In this tutorial we're going to show how to add particles to a flex container in order to simulate granular and liquid materials. First we're going to spawn particles in the volume defined by a mesh. Let's add an empty game object. Let's call it flex array actor and let's add a component called flex array actor component. We can see here that we need to specify a container and also an array asset that we still need to create. Let's fix up the transformation here so we can see the result. All right, let's create the flex array asset. So let's just pick a boundary mesh. Let's just pick a sphere here. And the rest of the parameters should be okay. You can see here in the preview how the sphere is going to be sampled by particles. Let's go back to our actor to our game object and assign the flex array asset. Now you can't see any particles, so it's always useful to, to enable debug rendering. So you can see what's going on in the simulation. So let's run it. Okay, this looks like a granular material. If you want to have more like a liquid behavior, you can tick the fluid box. Let's see how that looks now. Okay. Another way to add particles to a flex container is to use a source asset. Let's create the corresponding asset. Flex source asset. The source asset needs a mesh. The mesh surface is used to define where particles are spawned. Let's pick a quad here. We can increase the mesh tessellation in order to increase the number of sites where particles are spawned. You can preview it here. Let's also increase the maximal amount of particles that can be spawned into the simulation by the source asset. Let's again create the game object and call it flex source actor. Now let's add the corresponding component and reset the transform and again assign the corresponding container and the flex source asset we just created. Let's enable fluid behavior and let's enable debug rendering. Let's adjust the size of the spawning area. And then let's see how it looks. Maybe could use a little bit more of initial speed of the particles, so let's adjust that and let's see again. Okay. Now we're going to render the particles using the standard Unity Particle System component. Let's add one. And let's adjust some parameters, like the initial size, and let's choose a different billboard. Okay, that should do. Now, in order to adjust the positions of the particles correspondingly, we need to add an additional component called Flex Particle Controller. Let's add one. And let's disable debug rendering. Okay, that seems to be all right. Another way to render the particles is to use the Flex Fluid Renderer component. Let's change our actors to use that technique. Let's remove the old one and add the new one. And let's do that for the other actor as well. Okay, let's see how that looks. Now the properties of this fluid rendering technique can be adjusted in the flex container. In the next tutorial we're going to create solid objects and cloth.